Yes, Hickok 45, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from the beautiful hills of Tennessee. Well, the uh, used to be beautiful hills of Tennessee, the home of, guess who? Bill Belichick. Did you know he was born in Nashville? Yeah. So here we are in the fall, and I didn't take a shot yet. There's a reason for that. I'm not going to shoot today. Actually, I am but I'll explain why I didn't shoot. I'm here with a couple of fine revolvers and they have something in common, okay? Uh, you know how when I have a firearm I have not fired ever, I save it for you all to see the first shots quite often, just so we can experience the, I don't know, the first shots together or the uh, fact that it won't function. Maybe it won't shoot <laughs> so together, right? And there's something about both of these that kind of fall into that category. So as I was trying to decide what to shoot first, I was like, eh, well, it was kind of, I even fired either one of them, uh, almost. And so I'll just wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll never know what I'm gonna do anyway, right? Sort of. And we're pretty predictable, but, but not always. So, here I am, it is the 19th, and uh, we're moving right along into the fall. And you should be getting your turkey ready this week, probably, if you live in this country. Good chance you're gonna have a little turkey this week because it's Thanksgiving, for those who don't know. If you're in another country, maybe you don't know much about it, but uh, it's just that week, turkey and dressing and all that good stuff. And I love it. I'll be careful not to over overdo it on the carbs, right? Because I'm a, a low carb, uh, trying to be very low carb. But I love dressing, turkey, and gravy. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's actually one of my favorite meals. Uh, I've always said uh, I don't eat as much bird as I used to, but I could eat I, I could eat that once a week. You know, people don't think anything about having a burger. A uh, Big Mac or whatever it is you like or a pepperoni pizza every week and you don't think well I'm getting tired we had that last week who does that hardly anybody seeing a two liter down there in the woods I didn't notice must have missed or a bottle but uh, so just because it's the traditional Thanksgiving meal once a year meal oh uh, why don't we have it more often so, uh, yeah, just a thought. I, I love it. I love it. So I'm back from Tulsa. Uh, I went to the gun show. Yeah, yeah. Last week, I didn't know if I had been yet, did I? I <laughs> went through that little mental exercise. And, but I did go, and I met a lot of you. Some of you, many of you probably are watching right now. And so it was uh, good to see you and meet your funny face. You met my funny face. And uh, we chatted and uh, you know, had, a, had a good visit with a lot of people and I saw a lot of guns. I pretty much got through the whole show, uh, whatever that means. You know, people say at the Wanamaker show in Tulsa, you can't get through it in a day. And you really cannot if you stop at every table and study much at all. But it kind of depends on how you do work a gun show when you go. Uh, it just, uh, and everybody's in a different place. I think I might have talked about that last week. I know what I might be interested in or or what I'm not interested in or what I, I the firearms I love, but I have a, a really nice one. I'm not really shopping for them. I've seen them many, many times, whether it's Winchester Model 92s or 1886s or things like that, or M1 carbines, M1 Garands, some of my favorite firearms. But if there's a table full of them or I see like a whole row and there's a, quite a lot of that stuff, I'll go through it admire it uh, but I, I may not stop at all you know because I'm not looking for one I, I'm lucky enough I have a nice one and and uh, so it just depends uh, you know if you're going maybe you don't have many firearms you're at a gun show but you're just zeroed in on a I don't know a Ruger 357 Magnum or 327 <laughs> whatever it is that's what you're looking for and you're not necessarily uh, there to browse everything so same kind of, if you could get through there pretty quickly. Uh, well, not the Wanamaker show, but you could get through there probably half a day if that's what you're doing. You're just scanning every table for a certain model Ruger or Smith & Wesson or something. Then you could just hardly slow down, right? 
Anyway, great show. And here's why I'm not firing these yet. Well, this one's new, just told you. It's brand new. It ain't been fired, at least by me, okay? Looks like it might not have been fired by anybody. They cleaned it up if they test fired it. And it is a 327 Magnum, Federal Magnum, right? Uh, yeah, 327, get the numbers right. We've done the LCR uh, in this, and we've done a, a Henry rifle in that cartridge, and I think something else. And we never had done uh, the SP-101. And I have I checked, I knew during COVID, I thought, let's get one of those and try that out. Did some of y'all ask about it, the 327 mag and uh, federal mag, and I just, just couldn't get a hold of one or whatever, but I eh, recently got one here. Let's try that. Okay, that would be fairly pleasant to shoot in this heavy, relatively heavy Ruger, which had a three inch barrel, I guess, and very popular firearm, the Ruger SP-101. Boy, people that uh, carry these and have them swear by them. I have a good friend who just loves them, and uh, it's one of his main carry pieces. Yeah, pretty nice. So, well, let me load that shooter, and I'll tell you about the other one. All right. So we've got 100 grain jacketed soft point here. And I'm gonna shoot it, it's not been fired. So I may not hit anything today. You know, I may not with either of these firearms. And I'll tell you why on the other one as well. Because this one I've never fired. And in my recording, yeah, good thing. I feel pretty dumb to begin with. I would really feel dumb if I'm just talking to uh, an inanimate, well, it is an inanimate object, but at least it's an inanimate object that is turned on recording, right? Which transfers that uh, information to animate objects. You all, most of you are animate, right? All right, now this is loud, I'll bet, because it says Magnum. Well, let's try something easy first, up close. I cock it. Ugh. <laughs> Turn off my cat. All right, you ready? <laughs> Woo! That is loud. Right in the dead center, though. Amazing, huh? Yeah. Hmm. So, 327 caliber. Let's see what it'll do to a two liter. <laughs> Take care of it. Not a plate. Okay. There we go. It works. And uh, I don't know if I can tell. I have to shoot some more before I get an idea whether or not I feel like it's shooting off center or something. That's a that's a that's a, a blasty little firearm. No doubt about it. Maybe more than a 357, is it? I don't know. Uh, what's the appeal of these things in 327 Federal Magnum? Is there an appeal? Any of you have one? Well, one of the appeals, of course, maybe, maybe the only appeal, I don't know what the big advantage is over 38 Special 357. Uh, apparently, if you study the ballistics, they're uh, just as effective okay, as a defensive round. There's just essentially no difference, right? From what I recall, I haven't studied in a while. But in the same firearm, guess what? You get six rounds, All right? Normally this would be a five round gun. So uh, that's the advantage. You've got you a six shooter in a really small revolver. Yeah, you do. So, oh, I might load up shoot again. Uh, oh, I want to think about it. Uh, uh, I went on John's new podcast. He's got a new podcast going, uh, Standard Capacity Podcast. Look it up on YouTube. Uh, he's probably got it on uh, wherever podcasts are available to. I'm not sure, but uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, and uh, he's been doing it now for a few months, I guess. And uh, I, I went on for, and we gad for, however long, hour and a half or something. So if you want to check that out, one of the more, more recent ones. He did, he interviews a lot of comics and different things. So it's not all guns, but uh, 
but if you're interested, uh, check that out. Standard capacity podcast, yeah. All right, let's load this thing up again. All right. Also, I want to thank uh, Alabama Holster for their support of the channel. I'm always wearing one. Well, the phone holster for one thing, and then gun holster. Yeah. All kinds of great little Kydex concealment holsters. Just go to their site. Uh, I guarantee you'll like them if you get one. You will like them. Uh, I fell in love with them uh, many years back. So AlabamaHolster.com, great outfit. All right, let's try this again. Maybe I'll reach out a little bit. Ooh, Bigfoot's still down there. Let's see if I can get one on him. I think that one got him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how about the cowboy? Look, <laughs> I had another round. What's wrong with me? Uh, let's get Mr. Cowboy again. That one centered better. So, again, it's a wow, it's tight. You know, I didn't clean it. I normally do. I was kind of wanting to get on over here. And, uh, of course, those little things expand a fair amount. Uh, it would have been better if I'd have ballast all those chambers and cleaned them out there if I didn't do it. Not that would be fine. But I forget, it is a high pressure round. So, seems to shoot all right. I'll clean her up and shoot her some more. I'll shoot her some more today too, probably. So, uh, had a, yeah, I had a, had a great time. Uh, well, yeah, Tulsa was a great trip. It's a long drive. Every time I go out there, I think, oh man, I can't. I can't drive this, this I gotta take a couple years off from this thing. It's a long drive. But it's funny, after I've been back for six months or a year, whatever, and I see it's coming up, and I look at the calendar and say, okay, anything going on that weekend? And no, and it's a Tulsa gun show. Do I wanna go? I don't know, probably not. You know, get a little closer. And then I'll kind of talk myself into it, especially if, if one of my shooting buddies uh, is interested in going. And of course, that's what happened this time. I I contacted a fellow. I didn't think he'd be able to go anyway. You know, I just, too much going on. Uh, he's got too much going on. I, but I just said, oh, let me touch base just in case. That would, that would I would go if he wanted to go. I'm not sure where I'm going if I go by myself. I'm not sure. Although I enjoy going by myself. I don't have to have somebody with me. I just... Uh, I just thought, well, that'll help me, push me over the edge, if he, but I know he can't go, but I'll, I'll text him anyway. Well, lo and behold, he wanted to go. He'd never been before, so uh, he enjoyed that. That was kind of a new experience for him. Uh, I recommend, as uh, I said on the uh, Instagram posting, I posted a picture, one picture from out there, and just said, if you've never been, you need to put it on your bucket list. It's uh, if you like firearms, if you're a firearms enthusiast and you enjoy gun shows, okay? Because it really is uh, the biggest pure gun show, I guess, in the country. Yeah. Now you can say the NRA meeting is is a huge, maybe bigger in some way, or I don't know, really not bigger, or the shot show and all those kinds of stuff. But they're just different. There's just the new guns and new offerings, and, and not an opportunity to buy and trade and sell and all that sort of thing, uh, so, and supplies and all that for sale and everything. So anyway, you need to make it sometime if you can. Now, what's the deal on this other gun? Oh boy. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention, gosh, got some news, bad, well, it wasn't bad news for me, it was bad news a few weeks ago uh, for his family. I got a message from, well, let me back up. You remember uh, the parody contest we had? Now, some of you are new, you know, unless you've seen those videos, uh, which you should have seen every video by now. Okay, uh, the uh, we had a parody contest. I think we did it twice. Then we parody contest. You know, Hickok 45 parody contest. You know, back like 10, 12 years ago. And we took it and we had figured out how to do. It. We, we had them send us the link to the video and we evaluated it. You know, and all that. And then the winner we put their video in 
our video. You know, when, when we announced the winner, uh, then I just said a few things, and then bang, there was that person's parody of me. You know, and uh, and Jason Walker won this one, and it was, he did a really good job. It's up there, the original parody contest winner, I think it's called. Maybe I'll link to it. And uh, and it's got his parody of me in there, and he has his son involved. His son gets sprayed with the two liters who's supposed to be him as a kid, I think, and all. And then, uh, as I recall, and that's why he hates two liters when he grows up, you know, all that kind of thing. So he really put some creativity in it. It was funny. But uh, anyway, I got a message, uh, Facebook, I'm glad I saw it, I'm glad I skimmed those. It was from, uh, I can't even pronounce the name, it was unpronounceable to me, uh, and the guy was saying that he was the father of, uh, of, a, of a fellow guy who was friends with Jason, and uh, they were at the bowling alley in Lewiston, Maine, so you know what's coming up. A few weeks ago, and they were both killed. His son and Jason Walker. And I was like, wow, you know, he just said, just in case you didn't know or hadn't heard, you know, and they were in a bowl, the bowling alley where it was uh, uh, a no carry, a gun-free zone place, so they couldn't be carrying. And uh, in fact, I, as he said, and I saw in, in the write-up that they cha they tr uh, charged the gunman. They got their family safe as they could, and they charged the gunman, and they all got killed. Uh, but yeah, sad news, you know. It's, I, and I, I talked to Jason. You know, if you recall, or if you see that video, uh, we had uh, been given someone contacted us and given us a a wood carving of a 1911. I wonder if we wanted to do a video on one of those, and then we could just keep it. I forgot that company or who did it, or if they still doing it or not, but it was an immaculate carving of a, of a 1911. And he did other guns too, I think, unbelievable. And so we had that around here trying to figure out what we'd do with it and uh, did a video on it. I don't know what it's called, it's in here somewhere in the collection, library. And so we decided we would just give that to the winner of the parody contest. So I remember talking to him, he's a good guy, and and uh, working out where to ship it and all that kind of thing. It's the winter, but but anyway, I don't know what's gonna happen. It's just a, a, a strange coincidence, you know, that they've, our parody winner, you know, up in Maine, I couldn't have told you where he lived if someone asked me, you know, uh, at the time I did, but anyway, eh, life ain't fair, is it? It's totally unfair. So my condolences to the, all those families, you know, Jason's families and his friend. They'd grown up since kindergarten together, uh, uh, the fellow's dad said. <clears throat> so, anyway, uh, let me go on to the next gun. Little airplane, yeah. There's a fellow not too far from me that has a landing strip. Uh, a lot of the time it's him, I guess. I don't know him. So, so he has an airplane, yeah, he's an airplane <laughs> strip. Uh, so what's this look like to you? That would be a detective special, 38 special. Okay, someone bob the hammer. Looks like something I would do, huh? Well, what's so strange about this gun? Well, nothing strange about it, but I got it back. And yes, I have fired this revolver it's been a long time. I traded this or sold it to a buddy. In fact, the same fellow who went to Tulsa with me. If you saw us there, we were together part of the time. A lot of time we were separated. He was looking stuff on his own. So he would be tied down by me or vice versa. But um, I sold this to him. We figured it was around late 80s or 1990, long in there. So it's been out of my possession for a while, hasn't it? I traded him out of it again. Sure did. And uh, so it's back. Now he's the one who had the hammer bobbed. Okay, and it's a detective special. They're kind of collectible. They, they really are, aren't they? And uh, he was expressing interest in uh, in selling it, maybe taking it out there. And I got to think about it. I said, well, I hate to see you 
take less than it's worth because the hammer's bobbed or whatever, end up coming back with it because uh, you know you know what the gun's worth, and but yet the Bob Hammer, which doesn't bother him or me, you know, you're not going to get that. And uh, uh, anyway, I got thinking about it. I said, you know, that gun means more to me. I kind of missed it a little bit, and uh, it, it belonged to me for a period of years, so it has that attraction. And then also, you know, I don't mind a Bob Hammer. I've been known to do that. My model 65 smith for example <laughs> except i did it myself not done this was done professionally by a gunsmith uh and kind of reblued or whatever so uh at least out the surface backside so anyway i thought, yeah i would trade him out of that thing uh it means more to me I'm, I'm his best market for it really because it used to belong to me i might want it back might enjoy getting it back and also a bobbed hammer doesn't lessen the value for me, right? So it's probably worth more to me than most people. So I, I probably ought to you know, work out a deal if we can. I, I wouldn't mind having that thing back. So we did, and here it is. So yes, I have fired it, but what's that? It's been over 30 years, maybe 35, but it's been over 30 years since I have fired it. And I remember distinctly that it shoots just a tad high right. I have an incredible memory. I was joking. I had no clue. I don't know where it shoots. I doubt that I did any long range uh, precision shooting with it or any kind of precision shooting much. But we'll try. I'll shoot some, uh, yeah, some Steinel 38 Special. All right. This is just uh, 150, I think it's 158 grain, kind of a cowboy load or something. Yeah, 158 grain around those flat point. And let's see if we can tell where it goes or if it still shoots. Bob Hammer, a lot of you get sick when you see something like that, right? Doesn't bother me. If I'm carrying that, I just soon have it like that. Obviously, you've seen my 642 Centennials, my uh, Kimber, I just posted the video on that, the, the Kimber K6XS. No hammer to grab, you know, so I'm fine. Well, let's see if we can hit the red. All right, let's hit it again. Feels good. I think I missed that red place, didn't I? Yep, feels all right. Shoot that again. It's a good feeling little gun. You know, that hammer, one, one issue or a, a potential issue when you bob a hammer like this is, is it's empty. Now, one thing I, I figure you can you can still cock it, do a single action. You know, if you got, I guess, a long thumb or whatever, but you start to cock it, pull it back, not a problem. But when you shave off some of that hammer, guess what it does? It makes the hammer lighter. Yeah, I'm a genius. And, uh, you want to make sure you don't do something to get uh, light primer strikes. That would be bad, especially at the wrong time, right? Out here in the range, it doesn't matter. Now you can experiment. I know people, boy, back in the 70s when revolvers ruled and 80s, but people would buy Colts and Smiths like this and they'd slick them up and lighten the hammer fall and all that kind of thing. So they'd have a really light double action and everything. And, and you see people clicking that thing, they wouldn't uh, bust the primer. Yeah, all well and good to have a nice light uh, double action trigger pull. That's fine, but guess what's more important? Yeah, that it fires. That's the whole reason they're doing that, making it really uh, smooth and easy to pull and keep on target for a carry gun. Yeah, all right. Oh, let's try it on the big foot, double action. I think I heard it. I heard that one. Yeah, good for big foot. How about you, cowboy? <laughs> yep. Well, miss, miss. <laughs> I missed, I think I, I'm jerking it right a little bit. Missed that two liter. So it feels all right, feels all right, and it fires. 
my old detective special. I might have mentioned, you know, we did a detective special video several years back with a, was it a 32, I guess? Uh, some, somebody lent it to us, I think. And I might have mentioned in there that I used to have a, a 38 special detective uh, special. And this is it. This is it. It took a little vacation from me. <laughs> yeah, it did. Oh, man. Anything else? Like I said, I'll, I'll, I've got to do a too much talking number four. We're up to number four now. I'll, I'll do one of those and post it here for, for too long. And uh, those will stay up over on Patreon. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff I won't get through today. Let me give some young people advice before we go too long. Uh, uh, elections are be coming up, you know, before we know it, and a lot of talk about it. So, uh, young folks, especially people who are thinking about voting and maybe for the first time or whatever, think about that. You know, uh, think about who you're going to vote for. It's it's a divided world, right? It's really divided, and like the presidential election, for example, it's going to be split no matter who's in there right no matter who is at the top of the tickets because the country is so uh, so split uh, so think hard about that think hard about it and don't get caught up in the personalities just think about uh, what life is going to be like what you think is going to be like for you and everybody if so-and-so wins or whatever uh, one of the I mean when you th what was that? I had a point I was going to make. Uh, yeah, I know what part of that point was. Uh, you are going to be, and I, we are going to be to some degree controlled by the party that wins next fall, especially this time next year. The party that wins, they're going to have a lot of control. And uh, in, in different ways, you know, the economy and whatever, uh, world events, world affairs. They're going to have a lot of control, and maybe in our individual lives, you know, a lot of politicians like all the control they can get. So think about, think about that as much as anything. Forget personalities and what you're seeing or news. Think about what the control is going to be like. Who is going to be trying to control you, and in what ways? You know, that are real, that are real, that are really affect your life. That's just uh, my advice. You know. Uh, there's just a lot of people out there that don't agree with you and, or me. And it's just the way it is. And so really from either perspective, ideally, like if I could be, if I were just dropped in from another planet and I know anything about the parties or that kind of thing, but I gotta go one way or the other maybe, uh, I might ask, well, which, which party is gonna offer me more freedom I don't know anything about them, but I'd rather not be told everything to do, uh, you know, in my life just mapped out for me and have very few choices. Choices, I, you know, so, so whichever party is gonna give me more individual freedom, uh, yeah, put me on that one, you know, kind of thing. That's kind of my thinking. I'm not telling you to think that way. Think how you like. You might want to be controlled, you know, more. But anyway, be thinking about all that stuff and doing some studying and not just, uh, Getting your information from TikTok, yeah, we're gonna end up being a TikTok nation, you know, shallow-minded nation, you know. Eventually, uh, hopefully, it won't happen too soon. So that's some of my lame advice. I mean, people have just gotten crazy. I, you know, I watching the news and and the, the you know whatever the riots and all the crazy stuff and protesting. And people like going in and, and just hordes of people going into stores and stealing stuff. And then, and then, then uh, things not being taken care of when someone does break the law or hurt somebody, it's like look, overlooked and, and just watch the news, the weird, the, just groups of people, you know, like the high school kid was kicked to death. Just, just things that are just going on. It's, uh, I tell you what, what, what it reminds me of and the point I was going to make it's like we're living in, you've seen these zombie movies or these movies that are, or maybe it's not exactly zombies, but something has happened, come from outer space and it's affected everybody, infected everybody, 
you know, with some weird virus and everybody is losing their minds, you know, or they're, they're turning into zombies and they're attacking everybody, you know, and, and the world is totally crazy. You know, we joke about these apocalyptic uh, scenarios and movies and all that, zombie movies. Man, I tell you, if you watch much of the news, you know, and you just, of course they're pulling out the worst stuff, but it, it's almost like that. It's almost like that. Except maybe it's worse because these people are not just slow walking, mindless zombies. You know, they, <laughs> I don't know. Crazy world. Can I shoot this thing again? All the more reason to have a good revolver with a bob hammer, right? <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's, let's pretend I need this. I've had to use it. Just like to make sure I can put things on target, and I think if I work with it, I could do well enough. I'm not sure I love the grip. Kind of, the, I don't know if it's a typical Colt issue. I, uh, most Colt grips don't feel as good to me as a Smith. Uh, this one has gotten kind of slick over the years. I might need to get a more rubberized grip for that. That uh, feels a little, but that was not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. Pretty cool, uh, you know, one of the big cool factors is since I sold this to my buddy, it has become a classic, right? Colt Detective Special. They command a high price and they're, they're, they're collectible. When I sold this to my buddy, I guess Colt was still making these, this exact revolver, you know? And then they quit making revolvers, right? And then they came back and started making, uh, so a lot has changed in those 30, 35 years. So he's got a little holster wear. He carried this a lot. And, uh, yeah, this thing is still tight as a drum. I mean, it, that cylinder locks up tight. Can't hate that. Let me shoot this thing again. If I can get the ammo in it, I should have cleaned it. Well, you know, one reason I didn't, I'll confess, is laziness uh, before I started or when I got it out of the box, it seemed, seemed very clean. I did look at the chambers in the barrel. I always do that. I'm sure there's not a wasp nest in there built up or something. <laughs> Mud daubers. Yeah, those went in just fine. It's, I guess it's the expansion. There's a lot of it. But, uh, you know, I thought, okay, here's my rod. My, my, I've got like two rods I use for everything almost, handgun-wise. And, well, a third for 22. But, um... Everything I shoot is that 38 caliber rod will work and everything else that 45, 44 rod, you know, the tips. And I just put either one patch on them or two patches and all that. And they just do everything. They're right there handy. And with 32, okay, I, well, see my nine millimeter rod ain't gonna work. I get a huge snake, which snake do I, I, I just, okay, I'll just go shoot it. So I took the lazy way out. All right, here we go. Well, I hadn't put anything on the gong. Let me try the gong. I don't know. I have no clue if it's hitting it. I don't know. I'm going to shoot a two liter. Uh, same old deal, it is very loud, and the bullet's very fast, and you know, I've lectured you all on that many times, so it, it makes it uh, tough to hear it when it hits steel quite often, when you have that combination, really, really fast bullet, and very loud, uh, so, yeah, so I'll blame it on that. You all, uh, Usually, you can tell uh, in the video, though, you all can probably tell, I don't think I was hitting it, but didn't it? sort of sounded like it was smacking into something but that might have been the sound of it so i'm not gonna fool with any more on that so i'll let you go i've gone too long uh anything else you're dying to know about oh i'll tell you something else uh i've been hearing uh this week about a plan from some senators to uh work out a plan to keep cell phone phones 
from being such a distraction in schools. I've been hearing a lot about this the last couple of weeks and on the ride along the radio. I think, what? Talking about how uh, teachers complaining that cell phones are a distraction. You know, kids using their cell phones in class and everywhere and everything. And I thought, are you kidding me? There is a school in this, apparently there is, there's senators coming up with some, trying to come up with some plan bill, a lockbox and all this stuff and the kids get to school because it's just affecting their education and it's affecting them and the teachers are going crazy. And I thought, whoa, where have I been? You mean there is a school on planet Earth, at least K through 12, that allows kids to carry a cell phone? Like, really? Or at least to have it out. You know, I'm not saying it'd be searched, but I mean, to, wow. Well, count me out. I wouldn't be in, <laughs> I wouldn't be teaching anywhere like that. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I speak with uh, some authority on that or experience on that matter. I taught in, another reason I taught in private schools, if I had taught in some of the schools around the country, I would have lasted a month. Not that they would have gotten the best of me, they would have gotten the best of me psychologically and I just would say, well, I'm gonna choose a different career, I'm gonna do something else, you know? I just wouldn't have put up with it. And I, I would not have been the proper temperament because I would not have put up with it. And, uh, you know, I might have gotten in trouble for what I said to kids or required or whatever. So I just wouldn't have lasted. Uh, but even in private schools where I taught, that was an issue, but it wasn't a big, big issue. I taught for my last, uh, what, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, ten years, when every kid had a cell phone. They all had cell phones, but they were, they were to keep them in their locker. That was the rule, keep them in your locker until the end of the day. Because uh, I think at first we had a policy where they couldn't even bring them to school. But then it became kind of, uh, at the end of the day, they're all playing sports and they've got to call home, find a ride and all that kind of stuff. You know, So after three or so, you know, it became you know, much more uh, convenient if they had one. They weren't piling up in the office to use a phone, all that kind of thing. So it actually worked out really well. But uh, they kept their phones in their lockers that was the that was the the rule put it in your locker when you come and even if they fudged that thing had better not ring in class you know or be seen i i, I think twice i had to confiscate a phone but i just picked it i just we just take them to the office and uh and then they had to go to the office and get it at the end of the day and i don't know the principal the dean i i don't know if he called home I think there was one period of time where the parent had come in and, and get the phone. Or maybe that was on the second time or something like that. So it was something like that. You know, they had to, they lost the phone and uh, maybe for a day or the parent had come and get it. Anyway, there were consequences. So it just wasn't a, a, an issue. You know, I, you know, like I said, a couple of times uh, I saw one and, uh, you know, it's, I mean, boy, what a zoo that would be. What a zoo if everybody had a cell phone in class. Woo, it'd be a zoo if they even had it in their pocket because you know about half of them they'd be not have the ringer turned off and that distraction and all that kind of thing. They'd be sneaking texts and all that stuff and I don't know how they're going to learn anything. But man, where have I been? I, I can't imagine any school uh, where th that that would be a problem. Why would any school let that have evolved into a problem? Like, are you, are you totally crazy when cell phones started showing up, when kids started having them? And the first time a kid had one in class and was doing something and was distracted by it, and then the second time, you mean you didn't develop some policy immediately where they just couldn't have them? Whew. I don't know. That is, little did I know that uh, many of the schools out there they're going crazy over cell phone uh, management and all that kind of, wow. Kids have enough distractions. They can't deal with the cell phone. I went through that a lot with the laptop computers. I mean, you know, I had to be a, a bit of a dictator on that to some extent, you know. They couldn't just be doing any old thing on the laptop. It was kind of under supervision. Okay, let's all do this now, go to this and do that and research this and, 
you know, work on your paper, and I'm walking around the room, I'm seeing everybody's screens, you know, and that kind of thing. And, and that was a challenge enough. I can't imagine having cell phones. Oh, so anyway, uh, that just struck me. I made a note of that, and uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how. How are we ever going to have any teachers? You know, I, I, society is just just blowing up, really. I mean, who would want to go into teaching today, given the support that you have or lack of support? Who would want to be a cop today? Although that's changing, I think. You know, I mean, all these essential uh, jobs, positions that people in the past have been drawn to, and many actually have a calling and enjoy it. I enjoy teaching, liked it a lot. And I know a lot of people in law enforcement like it, not so they can, not so they can boss people around. Now there may be a few like that, but you know they, they, they just have a calling, you know, to be a fireman, a cop, or serve the public, and enjoy doing that. But I don't know where, where we're going to get cops and teachers down the road. You know, those jobs are not exactly highly desirable right now. So, boy, I got on a rant, didn't I? Well. I think I thanked everybody, and I appreciate uh, all the folks that help us out. My gosh, uh, we are so lucky. Did I miss anyone? Nope. Got everybody today. I'm going to shoot this one more time before I let you go. I know I'm going long today, but I'm going to shoot this 38 special again. And like I said, you can go over and check out John's podcast. It, now, those are his podcasts, and it's his, his deal. He does, uh, I think, a bunch of them in Chicago and some of hound down here. And... Uh, so I haven't even seen them all. I think, uh, uh, yeah, I've drawn a blank on that second. But anyway, standard capacity podcast is called. All right, 38 spray. This is a neat gun. You can't hate a vintage Colt, can you? Or a vintage Smith. Oh, let's shoot that bullseye some more. Well, no, wait a minute. Let's try this out there. Did I try this on the gun? These are going a lot slower, so I can't pretend I'm hitting when I'm not, because you'll hear it. <laughs> I can't fake it. All right, go double action. I heard it. All right, let's try Mr. Uh, I think I'm going to call him Clyde. A lot of you like Clyde. So, uh, let me just stick with Clyde. <laughs> nice. Good. All right. Good to have my detective special back. Now I can be a detective again, right? Yeah. Good to have you all out. And uh, again, it was great to meet so many of you at uh, where was that place? The Wanamaker Gun Show in Tulsa. So I drove a long way just to meet you. <laughs> no, I drove a long way to just look at firearms, but to also meet you. So it's good to see you. I've heard from some of you already since I got back that I met and uh, wonderful trip, wonderful uh, time, a lot of driving. It's nine to 10 hours, you know, one way. So you got to really want to go to a gun show if you're going to drive 10 hours. I always joke about how you you might be a redneck if you drive 10 hours to get to a gun show and then 10 hours back, right? Or a gun nut, I guess, is more accurate. So I will let you go, and I will talk to you next week. I feel like I'm forgetting to tell you something, but it couldn't be too important. I don't know much that's very important. Life is good. <laughs>